Okay, it's baking time. So as you can see from the title, I am making a Victoria sponge, but I'm putting a twist on it and Crumbs and Doilies Cupcake Gemma does a raspberry ripple cake, but she hasn't actually shared the recipe of that. So I'm just going with the jam that I have and putting that on the outside of the buttercream to make the raspberry ripple effect and just seeing how that works. Kind of experimenting, but um, as I, as you may already know, if you don't, I um, bake, I love baking, it's like my favourite thing, um, but I only really do it for friends and family. Um, I haven't really branched out to being paid for it yet. It makes me a bit nervous because at the minute I'm doing it to bless people um, and I'm giving it to them. So all the cost of ingredients comes out of my pocket and I'm blessing people. Whereas if people start paying me, it then puts pressure on me to get it perfect because they're expecting a standard because they're paying me money. So, and I'm in no way a professional. I just, I'm an amateur, I love doing it. I get better and better every time I do it because my skills improve and I learn more about it. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely not a pro, so I don't charge, I don't do it for money, I just do it for enjoyment and for fun. So, I'm using the Cupcake Gemma Classic Victoria Sponge recipe for the sponges, but this is from 2014. So it's a very old it's one. Three large free range eggs, and she weighs them. She weighs the three in their shells, and then bases all the other ingredients on the weight of those three eggs, which I've never come across before, but it's very interesting. So I'm going to get a bowl. And this. And I'm going to weigh them out. So I'm just going to grab all my ingredients, and then once I've grabbed all my ingredients, I'll weigh them. Okay, so I'm going to weigh my eggs let's put it on grams so you've got three large free-range eggs in their shells so that's 196 so now I'm going to weigh all of my ingredients at 196 grams so the first thing I'm going to do is um, weigh my butter and my sugar now this butter I've just taken out of the fridge, which was very silly of me. Again, not a professional. <laughs> so I am going to take my eggs out of this bowl and I'm just going to weigh the butter in here and then I'm going to just put it in the microwave just to soften it slightly. And then I'm going to weigh my sugar, 196 grams of this as well. This is my baking spatula. I use it every time I bake. It's a Christmas one and my mum got it for me in my Christmas Eve box um, because my mum sends me one every year. She did me one when I lived at home and she's continued it since I've moved out. So thanks mum for my spatula. I love it. And every great cake I make is a product of your present. <laughs> right, so I'm just gonna cream these together. And I will speed this up for you now. Right, so you need to cream that together until it's super light and fluffy and like really pale. And then we just need to whisk up the eggs. So again, grab a bowl crack the eggs into your bowl so whisk up the eggs okay 
Okay, and we are going to turn this back on and add this gradually, little by little, until it's fully incorporated. <laughs> So I'm going to add a teaspoon. I'm going to add some vanilla to that. And then fold it in. Of whole milk. I've just got a pint here because I don't need, I'm not going to need all of it, but I've just purchased this for this cake. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this in just to loosen the um, texture a bit because it's quite stiff at the minute. Just fold it all in. Now, I was going to double this recipe because um, Gemma has just used it for two cakes. Now I want to do a four layer cake, but my cake tins are six inches. So I'm not sure the sizes she's used or anything like that. So I've just made this for now. Um, and then I'm going to fill all the, case, fill all the um, baking trays, the cake tins, see how much of it is used and then make more dependent. But don't worry, you don't have to watch me, watch me make it all again. I'll just quickly do that. So. This is all done, it's looking lovely and silky and airy and smooth. Now I'm going to prepare these. So I literally just get my pastry brush, get a bit of this butter on it that's left over. And just the bottom of these. Right, now I have a horrible feeling that this is going to do two. <laughs> so I'm going to double it again, but that's fine. I've got the ingredients, so it's not an issue. So let's weigh this out. 230. So then, what I like to do is get my cranked palette knife, which is one of these. It's just a mini one. I'm going to put these in now, rather than wait. And then I just literally move them about and even it out in here. So these are going in at 170 for about 25 minutes. And whilst they're cooking, I'm gonna really quickly make another set of butter. Right, I'm back. My cakes are out the oven and they are just cooling down. Um, it is absolutely boiling in here, so I'm going to open a window, but we live right by a train station, so there may be train in this, <laughs> but I think it'll be okay. If I feel it's too noisy, I will close it again. So I am going to make the buttercream whilst my cakes are cooling down. I'm just going to, because I'm just doing a classic vanilla sponge with a twist, I'm just making a normal 
vanilla buttercream. So I'm going to do about 300 grams of butter and I'm going to whip it in here for like five minutes. And that is a crazy amount of... Just a kid screaming. Whoopsie. Um, that's a crazy amount of time, I know, but it will be worth it because your butter will be so smooth and silky that your buttercream will be amazing. So this is what makes this buttercream. So you must do it for at least five minutes. Now with softening this, your buttercream is completely different to making cake because obviously this is the main ingredient in your buttercream. So you want it to be a very specific consistency. And I'm gonna put it in the microwave in 10 second bursts, stirring until it's the right consistency. You want it to be, like this is pretty hard. Like it's making indents in my fingers, but I'm having to proper push. You want it to really easily make indents into the butter and not have to push really hard, but you also don't want it to be runny and oily. So that's the difference. Right. Can you see on this how it's really soft and it's easily changing shape, but it's not incredibly oily and runny. And that's what we want. So that's perfect. So we'll pop that in. Pop that in there. So that's all done now. And we are just gonna whisk this for five minutes. So I'm gonna put on some really nice, calming, lovely music. Um, and we will give this a good old whisk for five minutes. I don't know what I'm gonna do for five minutes. Um, unfortunately, it's only about half three on a Friday afternoon. So all that's really happening outside my window is people coming home from school. So it's nothing majorly exciting. But hopefully, whilst I stand here for five minutes, something exciting will happen that, that will entertain me. Right, so the only interesting thing that happened in that is my washing machine finished its cycle. That's it. Fun five minutes for me. Now, to those of you who have got a stand fixer, I envy you, and I'm hoping that one day my husband will let me get one because of how much making I do. But at the minute, I don't have one. And so five minutes of using this, it's boiling hot. Like, it's so hot. <laughs> so I've already been through three of them because I use it so much, it just keep breaking. Anyway, yeah. this is what you want your buttercream to look like. It's soft, it's beautiful, it looks like whipped cream, it's pale, it's perfect. Like, that is just butter. There is nothing else in that. It's just butter. That is the consistency and the colour that you want your butter when you make buttercream. Beautiful. It's 640 grams of this sifted. That is a lot of icing sugar. But bear in mind, I'm making a four tier cake. I will not be eating all of this icing sugar. I just noticed it. the sun's coming in and it's making this weird line situation. How annoying. So, but yeah. Now this is all, I mean, look at how much that is. <laughs> Crazy amount. So I'm gonna add this in two halves and beat in for about three to five minutes between each one. incredibly stiff buttercream because it's got a lot of icing sugar in it but we are going to thin it out with some whole milk and some vanilla extract so I'm just scraping down the sides so now that that is all scraped down on the sides it's all like a really lovely and um, let me show you actually I will show you it's a lovely velvety consistency but it's very stiff so we need to add some liquid to it 
So the liquid I'm going to add is I'm going to add three tablespoons of whole milk. Here's my tablespoon. So in a mug separately, I'm just going to add three tablespoons of whole milk. Two, three. And to that, I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Right, so this is my whole milk and vanilla extract. So I'm just going to add this little by little into the icing sugar until it's fully incorporated. Um, I've actually put four tablespoons here of whole milk. Now it may not need that much, so I'm just going to add it and then once it gets to the right consistency, um, stop. Now this buttercream is beautiful, <laughs> like it is so beautiful. Like look how velvety and smooth that is. Doesn't that make you just want to eat it all? Oh, so good. So I have got a whole bowl full of this and this is what I'm going to use to ice my cake. So I'm just going to cling film this and pop it in the fridge but I'm not gonna let it be in there for too long because otherwise it will stiffen up too much um, and I won't be able to spread it. But if it does stiffen up too much, just add another tablespoon of milk, whisk it up until it softens out and then it'll be ready to be spreaded. Spreaded. Then it'll be ready to be spread. Um, so yeah, it's, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> I will move back. So you can see what I'm doing now. So I'm just putting a bit of buttercream on the base of my um, cake board. Um, this is a 10 inch cake board and I sometimes have used this one which is an 8 inch but what I've found is that it doesn't give me much room for error. As I've said I'm not a professional so I'm not perfect at this in any way. Um, so I just find that a 10 inch gives me a bit more flexibility with a six inch cake, gives me a bit more room for error. Um, but this one is a lot thicker, which I prefer. It feels sturdier when there's a cake on it. Um, this one I got from Tesco's and is a lot thinner. So we'll see, I haven't used a thin one before, so we'll see how it goes. But I've just put a bit of buttercream on the base of my uh, cake board and I'm just going to put my first layer on. Now I don't know if you can see, but this is a very crumbly cake, like incredibly crumbly. So we are going to have to lock these crumbs in tight. So I'm just pushing it down just to make sure it's stuck on here firmly and it's not going to move about. Um, I've also got this here just to wipe this clean every time because otherwise it's just going to smear everywhere and that's not what we want. So I'm just putting a lump of, cream, a lump of um, jam on the bottom layer. And because it's so crummy, you literally just want to do a quick sweep and then take it off. because as you can see, it's bringing up crumbs with it. Okay, that's my first layer of jam. Now I'm just going to put my next cake slice on, which is going to be this one. 
just pressing it down, firmly sticking it on there. And then I need to wipe my spat, uh, my cranked palette knife so there's no jam on it. And then put a dollop of this in the middle. Now, it's a bit controversial, but I'm definitely a buttercream um, Victoria sponge person. Not cream. It needs to be buttercream. It's the only way. And the people that I'm making this for agree. So, if the people that I'm making it for wanted cream, then I would make cream. Now again, really carefully because the crumbs will come up. So just pressing firmly, but not too firm, just to set the crumbs in. Next layer. We're going in. With our crumb coat. So this is what's going to lock all those crumbs in place. Ready for our final coating. So now um, this is fully coated um, as you can see it's got a nice layer all over it um, so I'm just going to crumb, um, sorry, let me start that again, I'm just going to pop this in the fridge um, just so that it can set a bit before I do its final coat um, and the ripple effect. So I will, oh, I don't want that, sorry I just noticed it's got a bit of a lump on it. And if I let it set like this, it will not, um, it will not ice as smoothly. So I want to get rid of it. I think I'm going to need a new cloth for the next round. Okay. Happy. Happy, happy, happy. Right, so this is now going in the fridge for about 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, see this cake board is tiny. <laughs> so the reason I put that in there to set is because if I did the next layer 
um, all the crumbs are going to come out again and that was the hard thing about setting the crumbs is that it's so crummy you want to set all the crumbs in with one layer first put it in the fridge so that it's hard so that when you put the final coating on um, it's not like trapping all the crumbs in it it's just clean and smooth and it looks good that's the hope we'll see this has been in the fridge for what's the time uh, about 50 minutes five zero so i will do the um final coat now and i'm just going to sieve some jam um just for the ripple effect on the outside There's because it has a lot of bits in. <laughs> I mean, it would have been wise for me to get a smooth one, um, but I only just came up with the idea after I ordered the ingredients, so after they got delivered, I mean. And there's no point wasting money, is there? So. Um, jam so that is the pure jam with no bits in ready for the outside and um, this has now set so it's really firm um, it's ready for me to put, put its final coat on and um, I've cleaned off my spatula I've got a clean cloth so I'm just gonna go for it so I'm just gonna put all of this on here Okay, so I've just dumped all of the icing on there really, really like just dumped it on and I'm now just gonna get my cake scraper and put it against it straight and just scrape it all off. And now I'm gonna do the um, the top of the cake. So I'm just wiping this clean. Just gonna go like that. Okay. It's not perfect and I'm not quite I'm not happy that it's not perfect but it's pretty good, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, it's just not perfect, and I just get a little bit perfectionist in these, but I'm still pretty happy with it. Um, I mean, I could do this for ages, but I just think at some point, I'm just gonna start making it worse, so I just need to stop. <laughs> right, um, I'm just getting this cloth again, finding a clean bit. Wiping this all off, um, and then I'm going. This is the ripple bit. So I've got my jam here. I'm just going to get a bit of jam, and I'm just going to blob it on here. Get a bit of jam, blob it on the side and just do that all the way around in different places. Make sure it's really clean because you don't want any buttercream on it. So clean cake scraper, put it on the side Okay, now I'm going to get this again and I'm going to put bits on the top. But these are the bits I've scraped off 
So they all have buttercream in, so I'm gonna use this bit, which is my, my clean bit. So I'm just gonna pop it on the top and spread it. There we go, that is my Victoria sponge. Um, buttercream and strawberry jam. Um, a little bit jazzed up, made a little bit posher. Um, I will put the in the description box um, all the recipes that I used to make this. Um, so please give it a go. If you do give it a go, um, please uh, post on Instagram and tag me at, at Mrs. Lauren Oliver. I would love to see your bakes that you've recreated. Yeah, please like, subscribe and comment and I will see you in another video. Bye.